feel that uh, as a marketer, if it's not CFE Media, when you, when you go to market, you need to have solutions. And you need to have solutions based on, we think, research. This is a, a flagship uh, study for Outsell, 11th year. And the basic story is we poll 1,500 marketers, all decision makers, budget holders, split by B2C and B2B, so. We wanted to make sure we had a positive user experience, and we'll talk about that a couple times today. It's really important that the customers enjoy being there and that they want to come back and that they find it easy to use your site, because otherwise it really doesn't matter what you have on there, they won't come back. We'll start with the most valuable content types. Uh, this has been a consistent question that we've asked across all of the research studies. Uh, the first one I always like to start with is when we ask the engineers, what is the value of good content to you? 75% of the engineers said I'm more likely to do business with a company that I see as a regular producer of good content. Hillary, uh, you had alluded to some of the interviews that you do on a regular basis. Um, and that we're, we're talking about the different types of communication for specific engineers, but if we were g getting into the buying cycle itself, are you gearing specific messages during the buying cycle? And, and, and if so, how, how do you go about creating that? And then, of course, what type of expectations? Again, back, back to that ROI discussion, what type of ex expectations do you have? Sure. Um, you'll be shocked because we actually use interviews <laughs> for the buying cycle as well. Okay. And we create buyer, buyer personas around the buyer stage so that as we're creating content for those different stages, we can look at those buyer personas. So if it's awareness, Al, or if it's, you know, purchase Paul or whoever it might be, we know what type of content they're looking for at that, right. that phase of the process. And we literally interview engineers and we say, okay, you're just getting started, you're researching something, what are the types of content that you look at and what channels do you use to do that? And then through those interviews, we gather that information and incorporate it into our marketing campaigns. Okay, excellent. Everybody um, in the crowd here wants to know, uh, how much content do you look for from a manufacturer on a regular basis? Now, we saw some of the stats earlier. You, you don't want you know, more than two emails from any individual uh, uh, you know, sender in a day. What are you looking for for some of the manufacturers? And I'm assuming it depends on the relationship you may have. Uh, and it depends a lot on what they're offering us. If they have the same product and they send me 20 emails in a year about the same product, I'm probably going to ignore it. Um, so. Um, I think that you can condition engineers to await emails or whatever that media is that's coming. Um, if you give them something that's useful, when they see it pop up again, they go, oh, the last time I saw that, that was useful and I would leverage it. I wonder what they're telling me now. Um, if you go, and, and me, it's usually about five or six times, and it's the same just stuff, um, usually I'm unsubscribed and I don't have time for it. Um, but I usually, I think monthly is probably you know, a very good um, time frame. Um, because engineers will uh, put stuff in their inbox and three weeks will go by and they will go back because you know, we're conditioned to you know, dot every I, cross every T. So we're going to make it through our inbox. It's not going to get lost. It just might take us some time to get to it. So I would say about monthly. Okay. Bill, I, I see you shaking your head. So then what do I do? Then I've got this marketing automation at the bottom. I need one piece of information to get this machine running. That is an email address. Then, almost regardless of the platform, you can nurture that user. You can ask for more information using progressive profiling techniques. You can get them to tell you their name, their age, their shoe size. You can get tons of information, their job title, the company they work in, how big the company is, when they're looking to make a decision. But none of you are going to give up that information freely, are you? No, because everybody out here is trying to get the same stuff. I have to give you something of value at every step of the process. If I give you value, you're going to engage further. This is the trade-off. We're making a handshake. Every time that I communicate with you, I need a value trade. You need a value trade. And 80% of those CEOs indicated they don't trust their marketing departments, stating that they consistently fail to prove how their marketing strategies generate business growth and customer demand. Because of this lack of accountability, 64% said that they have removed critical responsibilities from their marketing departments, including product development, pricing, and channel management. This is absolutely a self-fulfilling prophecy. 
Management doesn't trust marketing, so it removes critical responsibilities, which only further guarantees that marketing is going to fail at driving consumer demand and business growth. In order to be effective marketers, we must first understand this disconnect, and we must accept the role that marketing has in having created it. And then we need to get connected.